There are a lot of people every day who go unnoticed as they give of themselves in one way or another, in time or resource. They ask for nothing in return, nor do they ask for any type of credit or recognition. But their lives and their love leave a lasting impact on those around them. Why? Sometimes we see this lasting impact for generations after. I want to find out what the common thread is. I want to find out what the common ground is. These are the stories that I want to share. I have had the privilege of meeting with people and talking with people from all around the world, and I hope to share their stories. The question I ask myself is, what common ground can we all stand on? I hope to find out in these conversations. A wonderful quote from Mother Teresa says, there are no great things, only small things with great love. Happy are those. So, Miss Ashley, um, first things first, I would like you to just in a very brief minute or two, just kind of give me a summary of who Ashley Kibberger is. Oh, <laughs> well, um, my name is Ashley Kibberger. I'm 30 years old. I grew up in northern Indiana, but now have been living full time in Mexico City, Mexico for eight, almost nine years. It'll be nine years in September. Wow. Um, which is super crazy to me because I was just going to come for six months and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, I think maybe I'll stay. And it turned into nine years, which um, still surprises me every single day. So I, I came originally to work here in working with like homeless people and just trying to be a blessing to the country. And as I was here for just, it was a little over a year, almost two years is when I learned a little bit more about human trafficking and what what that meant to the world. And so as I was learning about human trafficking and, and how it was a really huge problem in Mexico, I became very passionate and motivated in that direction. And so my my ministry, my my job, my everything that I do kind of shifted towards that. And it was it kind of surprised me a little bit because I in Northern Indiana, I, I didn't really know what human trafficking was. And then I showed up to a, a country where it's like the largest human trafficking areas in all of Latin America. Mm. And I was like, oh, whoops, I guess I, I really am going to get a dose of what human trafficking is. So it took me a minute, definitely, uh, to learn and to understand. I, I remember my first time being set, like we were going to the street. And I said to my friend, you know, how am I going to know when I see a prostitute? She was like, you'll know, <laughs> because I had never seen one before, except right. for in the movies, like Pretty Woman. And so I was like, oh, well, right. how am I going to know? It's like, if you wonder, just ask. So that's how I ended up here. And that's kind of what I'm like dedicating my life to. And um, definitely am super grateful for the place and the position that I'm in right now, because I feel like I'm actually making a difference in the area of human trafficking now. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So the first couple of questions I have for you, Miss Ashley, is I would like you to share with me someone in your life that has made a difference in your life. Why? And then also go into because they made a difference, did you, um, have you seen that they have impacted how you view life like was it a permanent shift in how you view things how you view life and moving on and there's no right or wrong answer it's just is that one of those things for you so so i would say i mean growing up the person that definitely made a difference in my life was my mom um but more so in the last few years like more recently more relevant I would say is my boss, Benny Yu. Okay. Um, Benny, Benny showed me what the love of like daddy God was <laughs> in a way that was very tangible. Um, I remember I was walking through a really, really hard season 
And I got a phone call from Benny. And so it was before I ever worked for him. I was just a volunteer and I, we didn't, he had no reason to call me. He has, he's also a pastor at our church. But he called and he said, hey, Ash, are you okay? And I was like, no, I'm not okay. You know, <laughs> losing my life <laughs> on the phone. Right. And he was like, well, why don't we talk about it? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I don't want to talk about it. And he was like, do you know how this works? You pick up the phone, you call and you say, Benny, I need help. I'm, I'm not okay. And then I just fix it. Like I talk with you and we fix it. We figure it out. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll call you later. And it took me like three days to feel like that I had like the confidence to actually ask him for help. But the moment I did, I said, Hey, I, I need help. I'm not okay. He was like, great. Here's, we're going to have a meeting. We're going to talk. And we sat down and he just cried with me, you know, and said, you know what, like what you're walking through, I'm so sorry. Like, that's very hard. And like, I'm going to be here. My wife is going to be here. Like he and his wife like, just walked with me through that season. And that's actually what made me choose to work for them because of their humility, of their way that they showed God's love. Like in that season, I wasn't making good choices. And like, I wasn't like, it was, it was just hard, you know? And he said, you know, like, I don't care about all of your choices. I care about who you are and how you got here. So as a result, I feel like that the way they have led me <clears throat> has shifted and shaped and molded my leadership in a way that I choose to walk with people differently after hearing those, those words of life spoken over me in a season where I was full of, of brokenness. So I think that that has really shaped and molded my leadership over the last three, four years that I've been with them and has made me a, a better leader. Wow. That's really great. So the next couple of questions I have for you are, um, I wanted you to share with me someone that you have seen in your community, either where you are now or back at home in Northern Indiana that you have seen throughout your life that it has made a difference in the, in the community. Um, it doesn't have to be something that is large, like, um, you know, something that we would see in the news or anything like that. You know, some small little thing is actually a really good example that you have seen that they have been consistent. They have, made a difference in their community why what have they done and what have you seen as uh, as an effect of them making that difference in the community sure so right before i moved to mexico i was in college working for a real estate company in fort wayne mm -hmm. and uh there was this lady that i worked with that had spent some time working in, in the White House in D.C. and then got involved in some, uh, some things in, in the political realm and, and invited me to be a part of. So I joined this, what they called Kitchen Cabinet okay. for Judge Wendy Davis. Okay. And running, she was running against a 19-year incumbent. So the, the odds were definitely not in her favor. But I sat at a table full of world changers. And uh, I, I remember sitting at a table with, with these women going, I feel so small. But they were an incredible group of women that were praying for her. And each one of them brought something different to the table and they didn't know each other. But I learned so much about faithfulness to God in that in that season because I sat with these world changers. So I, I served on Wendy Davis's kitchen cabinet as a 19 year old and uh, was just committed to praying for her and whatnot. And my role was I took signs around and stuck them into people's yards that asked for them. And I remember sitting that evening that she won uh, in a in a restaurant celebrating with her knowing that like God had ordained something so special over Wendy Davis's life and over the years I've watched her do some incredible things in the community like 
she's creating programs and opportunities for young people to not have to have jail be the end of their story. Like wow. when they come into her courtroom, she makes an opportunity to be, to be like, this isn't the end of your story. This could be the beginning of your story. So she works a lot very closely with the Redemption House as well. Uh, Redemption House in Fort Wayne is a program for women to rehabilitate instead of going to jail. And they can learn life skills and learn a different way of life. Maybe they never had the opportunity to learn those skills. So they didn't have moms and dads that were present. And it's one of the, the ways that I've seen Judge Wendy be a part of the community in a way that's so tangible because it's not just about lock them up and forget about them. It's mm -hmm. your story matters and I want to be a part of it. So I think that for me, watching Wendy Davis from the very beginning on her knees before Jesus to today and day, seeing how she's changing the lives of young people in my hometown, it's really inspiring. That is inspiring. I didn't know that story. That's, um, you know, when you think about a judge, uh, a lot of times people view them in a negative light um, uh -huh. because they are passing sentences and they are oftentimes giving tough love and a lot of them don't necessarily do it in a compassionate way for whatever reason, whether they've become hardened to what people are doing and going through and, and, or they just go by the letter of the law and that's it or whatever the case is. But to have someone who is compassionate and wanting to rehabilitate, um, make, can make a huge, huge difference and a lasting impact in people's lives. Do you have an example? Do you know? And if it's okay, if you don't, but do you have an example of, someone that came through her courts and um, has kind of been able to make positive changes. Um, and it's, like I said, it's fine if you don't, but I didn't know if that was a, a story you might know. Now, I don't, I don't know for sure of like a particular story. I, I follow both Judge Wendy and Redemption House yeah. online because I, I find that they tend to post a lot of things. So Redemption House, they're graduating three to four girls on, in every semester and by graduating like they finish their program and they're they are pardoned the rest of their what would be sentence if they finish the program okay. if they choose to not finish the program they just go back to jail so watching them graduate three to four girls each semester and those girls standing up and being like man i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this opportunity that really has been inspiring for me that's awesome and the last couple questions i have have to do with um, the value of impact. Um, do you feel that someone who is considered making a small quote difference in the life of a person or in their community, uh, creates a bigger ripple effect? Um, and why? And the last question is, when you're thinking about people who make a difference in other people's lives, what do you consider a couple of uh, common threads in their lives that um, uh, are a part of their makeup as to why they're why they are making a difference? Sure. So I think that each person has the ability to make a difference, whether it's big or small. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe that there are any differences that are made that are too small to not be recognized because everyone has plays a part, a role in everyone else's lives, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, something that Benny always says to me, he's like, you've got to have the professionals, your, your therapist, your professionals that have studied forever, your doctors and things like that you've got to have your friends and you've got to have your mentors mm -hmm. and we don't confuse those three roles. And so I, I value each and every person's input into my life, whether it's positive or negative, because I learned something. And I think that on a big community scale or on a small community scale, it makes a worldwide impact, whether we can see it or not. 
And I know just from my personal experience being on the mission field for nine years, every person in my community back home that has been a part of that journey has been a part of making a worldwide impact. As they've given to me, as they've prayed for me, as they've called and said, hey, how are you doing? Because nobody asks miss- missionaries how they're doing. <laughs> they're always like, oh, what what are what are you doing? Not what? How are Not you how, doing? yeah. And so I I think that I would I could owe my whole journey here to a lot of key players that maybe feel like they never made a difference in the world, but they have. And like there's so many young people and old people and homeless and rescue victims of human trafficking that are they have their lives changed because of the people that changed my life. So I think we're we're one big team. And I think some of the qualities that I've seen in people that really make a difference have been their journey. Like number one, their journey. I look back at like the like the first person I mentioned to you that really has made a difference, my mom. You know, my mom's journey has a story and it's a story that has impacted me since I was a little girl. And her story of how she loved Jesus and accept Jesus into her heart was the first story that I remember growing up. And so her journey with Jesus is the reason why I came to know Jesus so young. And so I think each person has a, a journey that they walk through that causes them to then act from that journey. So you can see positive effects or negative effects based on those journeys. And even if you had something negative happen to you in your journey, as we walk through healing with Jesus, we can have a positive impact on the world, even from a negative experience. And if from a positive experience, we can continue to have a positive experience in the world and a positive impact on the world. So I think that's the number one thing. This, the second thing that I've seen for people that make an impact in the world is their intention, mm. like how they're so intentional, yeah. but it doesn't matter if it's big or small, their intention is clear and their intention is to be a blessing and to see someone else raise up above themselves. Like it doesn't matter to them if they're smaller, like they feel that that intention to bring someone else up and build them up is more important. So I think those are two things that I think are super important in someone that makes a difference in the world. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Um, we are about at the end of our portion of the interview. Is there anything else that comes to your mind that you think might be pertinent to you know, what it is that I'm wanting to communicate to the world about um, common ground impact. You know, we all have common ground that we can find and we can all make an impact. So I don't, and again, if there's, you can't think of anything, that's fine, but it, I don't know if there's anything else that just kind of jumps out in your head as far as why is that important and what should we do to create impact? I Back at how stories were told before and in in history there weren't always books and internet and things it had to be yeah. the stories had to be told yeah you had to to share your experiences to share the things that that you had walked through and that's how we impacted generations and that's something that i feel like has been lost but something that i i've kind of accepted as like my own like life mantra is that I'm going to tell the stories, you know, and not even necessarily like written or on the internet, but to tell the stories. When I get together with my friends, they're always like, you have the craziest stories. And I'm like, yeah, I, I do. But so do you. Everyone has stories to tell. And I generally try to find the ones that are funny because I like to yes. share the funny ones. Same. But I also share the ones where God shows up, you know, the the other day I was telling stories about how God has provided for me over nine years. Mm -hmm. And then I needed him to provide again because I was kind of freaking out about money because that's how life is on the mission field. Sometimes you just go, wait, whoa, that big account's getting a little low. 
And I was, God spoke to me and said, do this. I did that. And an hour later had a phone call of somebody going, Hey, I want to give you this particular amount of money, which is what I was short. That's what I needed. Wow. And so then I was laughing because earlier in the day I was sharing stories of how God had provided and been faithful to me with a friend. And I called her and I was like, you're never going to believe this story. Like he did it again. She's like, you've got to share these stories more and not like as a way of being like, share the story and get the money. But sharing the stories are, are moments when we look back and we recognize that we weren't alone, like that we were walking with people and it allows people, like you said, to find a common ground. You know, I was sharing with a girl that was really wanting to grow in her faith for God to God to provide for her. So I was sharing a story that helped me grow in my faith, helped her grow in her faith. And then we moved forward and she had a different perspective on God's provision than she did before the story. Right. So I think that it's important that we talk about the things, not only the, the things that built our faith, but also the things that challenged us and shaped us and molded us. You know, I look back and the stories my mom shared with me as a little girl, not all of them were easy. No. Not all of them were stories of how Jesus was so good to her. Some of them were, I cried a lot and that was hard. Right. And that still made me respect her so much more because that shaped and molded her future and that made her the woman she was. So I think we've got to get back to telling the stories. And that's why I love what you're doing because you're telling the stories that that are going to shape the next generation for for who they will be because of the stories that are being told right now. That's awesome. Thank you. And thank you, Miss Christina, for being willing to talk to me. And you are in Mexico City, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I live here. You live here. Okay. Can you uh, start off by telling me a little bit about you? Who is Christina? Oh, my God. That's a difficult question. (laughs) I understand. Um, uh, I'm a social worker. Uh, I work in the Cosa de Vida. I worked for a year ago, I suppose, um, and I know uh, I love the the acting. I love the the music, all the forms you can express yourself mm-hmm. uh, with the with the art. I think that that's most like uh what else um uh, i don't know uh, have you lived in mexico city your whole life yeah my whole life i live here and how old are you yeah. i'm 24 years old 24 okay that's awesome <laughs> and, and you are a social yeah. worker yes yeah i study that but i really don't like too much okay i really i I think the most love it's the theater, the acting yeah. in a theater, and how you can uh, help the people with therapy and yes. that things. I think that it's the most like. <laughs> that is awesome. I uh, definitely love acting and singing, and I like to do those things too, so I can relate to you on that. That's awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So my first question for you, Christina, is I would like you to, as two questions together, um, I would like you to share with me someone who has made an impact in your life, Yeah. why they have made that impact and has that impact changed how you view life? Or uh, is it changed how you do things now because of the impact that they have had in your life? And if you don't understand quite what I'm asking, just ask Ashley and she could translate it better for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I suppose to many people to inspire me, but I think that in this moment, 
uh, the director of my work uh, in the safe house when I work uh, because she teach me a lot of things how you can change the, the people and world and so many things with love, with patience, with, um, I don't know, and, and she tell me about God, the one form that I never listen. Mm -hmm. So I think that she's the person. And has her impact changed how you help other people? Um, si, si su impacto en tu vida ha cambiado la forma que tú impactas y tú ayudas a otras personas. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that in my work, in my in my private life, because in my work, obviously with the person we work and how do uh, the things and maybe and I say I I said I say I say. <laughs> the, how we can do mistakes and learn about them and my private life I suppose with my boyfriend with my family even with me and how how the, the how to say ¿En español? ¿En español? Ok. Uh -huh. y, y la forma en la que yo misma me veo. No estoy en la forma en la que yo misma me veo. Ah, sí. Yes. That is awesome. Uh, my next couple of questions are, I would like you to think of someone, uh, you talked about your director, I would like you to think of someone in your community, um, or it, it could be past, a uh, long time ago or now, Someone in your community who you have seen kind of from the outside who you see them making a difference in the community and um, what difference do you see them making? What impact do you see them making? And again, if you need to have Ashley translate that to Spanish so you understand, that's totally cool. <laughs> Si hay alguien en tu pasado o en tu presente que has visto que está haciendo un impacto en la comunidad y qué impacto están haciendo. Ok. Eh, Puede ser la comunidad. ¿Quieres? ¿Qué? Y si quieres, yo te traduzco. Ah, ajá. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to translate for her because she's, um, that way she can just express herself fully. Absolutely. Yeah. Go right ahead. Este, pues, yo creo que diría que. En el presente he conocido más personas. En in, in the present, she's she's known more people that are making impact. Okay. Uh, yo creo que todas las personas de mi trabajo. <laughs> Every person that she works with, she sees making a different impact. Wow. Mm, puedo decir que desde Benny y Janice. Even from Benny and Janice, the founders. Mm -hmm. Hasta mis compañeras de trabajo. All the way to the, the girls that she works with every day. Okay. So the way that they, it, it's not just like a one-on-one -on -one impact, there is a personal impact here, like one-on-one, -on -one, but also a global impact in the way that they live their lives is it changing and impacting the world around them. That's awesome. Do you have uh, a story that you could share and you can change a name if you want that you have seen a direct impact of someone who has made a difference in someone's life and then you have seen them later on and they have changed? If you have a story and you don't have names, a story of a person who has Okay, you can share that if you if you feel comfortable. Ah, yo, yo sí puedo 
pues, yo diría que en, en mi caso ha sido como, como acercarme desde el tema de trata, o sea, como verlo de más de cerca y con una visión más, más de amor, no tan, este, como, ¿cómo decirlo? Como de libro, como... So the way that, that she has felt impacted and felt changed, um, for example, would be the way that she sees human trafficking, because she had studied it in school and like read it in books, but she had never seen it like face to face and like real. And the way that they've changed, the way she views human trafficking has been a huge impact. Yeah. And y conmigo, este, en mi vida personal, yo diría con cómo yo he crecido, cómo desde que entré al pozo hasta y de que conocí a las personas de mi trabajo, he crecido y he dado pasos muy grandes. And then her own personal life, how since she's entered into this job, how she's taken huge steps in her personal life as a result of the interactions receiving from those she works with. That is awesome. I love hearing that. That is so awesome. I want to know if you feel that a person um, can make a large impact in the people around them, even if they are doing what seems to be small things. It's not grandiose things. They are just doing small things, common things, regular things. And can that make a global impact? And what qualities do you see uh, in the people who are making differences in people's lives? What things do they have in common? And you might want to translate that, Ashley. ¿Cuáles? ¿Qué tú crees que es posible que tengan un impacto que están haciendo? Porque realmente no parecen siempre grandes. Ay, pues estoy así yo creo que sí puede las personas sí impacto en la pequeña porque desde la forma en la que construyen su vida la forma que se relacionan con nosotros, la forma en la que con su, a su familia ya están haciendo un impacto. So I think it is possible, like I think how we build our lives, construct our lives around us, and how we relate to others, is that already made. Sí, y creo que entra mucho en el poder de las palabras, de las palabras y el sol. Eso tiene un poder. And so I believe a lot in the power of words. I think that when words are spoken, they have a power over. Yes. Y, y la forma en la que nosotras nos, no, o nosotros nos dirigimos al hablar con alguien, lo hacemos desde el amor, desde el respeto, eso ya está cambiando algo en su vida, en su conciencia. And the way that we speak to people and the, the respect that we have for them and the way that we speak to them changes something in their in their that like can change the, the course of their life. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Las cualidades que yo veo, creo que es cómo se dirigen mucho lo que ellas hablan y la forma en la que hablan, pero también tiene congruencia sus actos van acompañados. I think the way in which people is a quality that that people that have impact um but i think that the way that they act and the way that they treat others is a way you can see um the, the amount of impact they're going yes <laughs> i agree um that is most of my questions unless there is anything else that you want to add or ashley um if there's a, a question that we kind of talked about that you think maybe she would be, hello, puppy, hello. Um, 
<laughs> he wanted to be, he wants to be in the thing. He's, he wants to have attention. Um, yeah. <laughs> is there any, uh, thing that you want to ask her uh, in our conversation that you think might be pertinent to, uh, what it is that I'm doing or did you think we covered it all? Okay. Uh, I have one question for her. I'm going to ask her. Okay. Is, if puedes contar cómo, cómo llegaste a trabajar en la Okay. I just asked her, like, how it is that she started working in anti-human trafficking. Like, what was the, the impact that it had on her, and how did she end up, like, choosing that as a path? Okay, that's great. Please share that. And so the, the way that she first was interested in trafficking was um, reading books and like uh, the simulation that the UN has and like speaks about uh, human trafficking. Y después me interesé por el tema por lo complejo que era. And then I got really to the, the topic because uh, of how complex the topic is. Y empecé a leer en específico a una autora que se cacho. And then I, she started about uh, an author, books by an author, the city of Cacho, she's here in Mexico. Y creo que de ahí, y con mi propia experiencia, supe que, eh, y hablo de mi experiencia, una experiencia también de abuso and then from the uh, combination with that and my my own experience being like I suffered experience of of and of um, abuse creo que me cuenta de que se puede sanar de que el ser humano puede and then I was able to that, like those things really can people and that someone can change even though they've been through a I think that's uh, very wonderful. I think that um, uh, in the Bible, uh, there's a scripture, um, Romans 8.28, oh and it talks about that God will use all things together for good. And that is my life verse. And I believe that you are living out exactly that. 